Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to show you the evolution of pattern matching in C Sharp from version 6 all the way to version 10. Now pattern matching is something you usually see more often in more functional languages, but C Sharp has made great progress in actually adding a very good pattern matching feature in the language and it only gets better. It is a feature that I really wish more people used more often and to be honest I should be using it more often because it is awesome and the research out of this video has actually pushed me to use it more just because of what it brings to the table. So let's see where it started, where it was and then from every single version all the way to 10 how it's evolved into being an honestly an amazing feature. If you like the type of content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe ring the simplification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. Now before I move on let me tell you about the sponsor of this video checkout.com which is also the company I work for. At Checkout.com, we're building the connected finance that businesses deserve with a wide range of payment solutions. We have 17 offices around the globe and more than 1,500 employees. And in this year alone, we're looking to hire a thousand more. And this is where me as an engineering manager and every other team in Checkout needs your help. We're looking for the brightest engineers that want to take the next step in their career. So if that's you, please click the link in the description down below. I'm hiring as well. Go to that career website. And if a job description sounds exciting, please apply. We're looking for engineers from all skill levels to join our teams in London, Paris, Berlin, Porto, Tallinn, New York, and San Francisco. If you're in any of those locations, please take a look. We really need all the talent we can get. So let me show you first what I have. I have an abstract class shape and it has an area. So I'm going to use shapes and inheritance to represent pattern matching because I think that really shows a very easily digestible example of the feature. So we have a shape, then we create a rectangle out of that, and then a circle, and we calculate the area for that radius, um, diameter, it's your usual shape inheritance setup. And then in this program.cs, I have created three different objects, a circle, a rectangular, which is a rectangle with the same height and width, and then I'm putting them in a list and I'm randomly selecting one out of them. And this project, actually let me show you here, is currently running in C Sharp 6. So in C Sharp 6, what you can do if you want to identify what type of shape that thing is, for example, this random shape is a circle, for example, then you can use the is operator. And what that will do is then it means you can either hard cast it or safe cast it like this and take the actual circle and print something about it. And if I run this enough times, one out of three, it will be a circle and it should print the a circle with area five. So this is C sharp six. We didn't have any complicated pattern matching at this time, but we could use the is operator uh, in that context, but that's pretty much it. So come C sharp seven, let's see what else we can do. Now, before we had to cast this for it to be um, a circle in here. So if I explicitly call that, it would look like this. Now, what I can do is delete that and add an, a name here. So this is circle with this, and I created basically a circle variable, which is already pre-casted for me. So if this is a circle, and let me just ensure that it is here, just for the example, if I debug my code, then you see that I go in here, I already have a circle here, and I can use it without having to go through this extra casting. So this made comparisons like this very, very easy. And that's the beginning of pattern matching. Here, the pattern we're matching is what type is that specific thing. However, this doesn't stop here. The switch was also able to use that. So now I can say, I can switch on an object, which previously we could not, and do something like this. I can say case circle, as you see, and then in here, I can say something like right line. This is a circle with area. And then in here, I can say C dot area. So at this point, this variable is a circle. It's been automatically matched to that type and I can use it, but it doesn't stop there. For example, if I want to make sure that I'm checking for a square, what I would do is case rectangle. And then I can say when R dot height equals R dot width. Now this is a floating point comparison. So it has this yellow squiggly line. Don't worry about it. But basically what this means is I can also have specific criteria for the type and its properties, because at this point I can use height and width from that type and would only match rectangles will have the same height and width. And they will say console.writeline 
this is a square. And then of course you can have your default case and then break into that where it says uh, right line, nothing special about this, something like this. And now if I run this, it's a circle. So I'm getting the circle area printed here. If I run it again, oh, that's because I've commented out all the other ones. Let me just quickly uncomment them out. So if I rerun this now, this is a square. It detected it because height and width are the same. If I run it again, again, square. Remember, this is randomly at this context. So that's why it's doing that. And then nothing special about this. And this would mark the beginning of pattern matching really coming together because this would also influence to a degree how switch expression came to be, which is a C-sharp 8 feature. So let's see how that went on. So I'm going to bump on the version to language version 8. So now we are in C-sharp 8. And a few things changed. First, we can now do the following. I can say, if I want to check that this is a circle, but also check some properties about the circle itself, let's say that the area is exactly 50, what I can do is use curly braces here, and then it will automatically allow me to say, I don't know, radius is 10. And this will only match a circle whose radius is 10. And I can add multiple things. I can have diameter or area. My geometry isn't great, so I'm probably going to butcher these numbers. But I'm just using random ones. You can have a radius of a specific number and an area of a specific number, and then that would match that thing. Meaning you can now shorten specific checks. So you don't have to say if this is circle and then in here say, you know, circle dot radius equals 10. And you don't have to do these types of if checks anymore. It's here for you to use. And to be honest, I've never really seen this feature utilized and it's so, so convenient. Even in my code, this can really, really be used and it's very, very practical. And you'll see how nine and 10 make it even more amazing, but let's wait for that. Then I want to show you how switches change because this is great, but with C-Shop 8, we got switch expressions, which is an awesome feature. So now what we can do, let's say we want to get some shape details out of that. So I'm going to say shape details equals, and I'm going to say random shape switch, and I'm going to go for a switch expression. So similar to before, if I want to match a circle, I can do circle. And if I want to use the, the actual uh, circle object, then I can do this and use it here and say this is a circle. So it can be as simple as that. And it's very good to always have the discard operator here to catch everything that doesn't match. It's basically your default. So this is a default. It didn't match anything. But then if you're looking to not use this variable here, you can always just discard it and then it's fine. You won't have to use it. But if you do want to use it and say this is a circle with area um, sir dot area, then you can do that. You can also do the same thing as before. You can say rectangle here and do something like this is a square. And the way you would do that here as well is rec when uh, rec dot height equals rec dot width. So you can still do that sort of thing. But what you can also do is let's say you don't care about the actual type, but you care about some property. Let's say the area is 100. Well, you can certainly do that. You can use the curly brace syntax and say area is 100 and then you can you know this area was 100 you can totally mix and match a process with pattern matching in switch expressions and of course you know nothing stops us from just printing it down here so shape details oh what type the shade let me quickly fix that yeah shape details and i can just run this and yeah this is a square it happened to be the square um this is the default didn't match anything so you see how Things are starting to come together. And this, this syntax currently is a bit lackluster because you can't do things like area is more than 100. So you have to be very specific. However, this was feedback to the C-Shop team. And this is what they did with C-Shop 9, which I believe this is really where pattern matching came together so, so well. So let's bump up the version to 9 here and see where we are now. So this is all still relevant, but we are no longer going to use that. So firstly, we got the not operator, meaning I can say if random shape is not a rectangle, do something. So I can negate the outcome of this check and do something with a shape that is not a rectangle. And this can be used in many contexts. For example, you can totally say if 
random shape is not null, for example. This is the proper way of doing a negative null check nowadays. But that aside, this version also allows us to do things like, what if I'm, I care about a circle with radius that is more than a specific number? So I can say circle where the radius is more than 100. And now I can do that. Not only I can do that, but I can say end less than 200. So I can use the end and the not logical operators added here to mix and match logic for a specific property, but also I can still have multiple ones. So if I want the area to be more or equal to a thousand, I can totally do that. And this is where multiple complicated checks could just come together in that single line. Very, very visible, in my opinion, very, very nice. And this is where the switch goes to another level, because now these things can be used in the switch expression. So let's see what we can do here. I'm actually going to just delete all that and still have that a default, actually. So we don't need to delete the default. And here we go. Let's say I want to check for a circle with an area that is more than 100, but less than 200. How do I do that? Well, first I say circle and then curly braces and then I say area more than 100 and less than 200. And then this can match my magic circle. Look how awesome that looks. You can now have specific criteria and different cases on the same type if you want to, like diameter is 100. For some reason, you can do that. Now, no one stops you. And that does not stop there. Like if you want to go crazy and have something uh, like called area details here, and you want to have a switch expression on the random shape dot area, so the actual area itself, then you can still do that by doing something like this, where you say more or equal to 100 and less or equal to 200. And you can totally have a case that looks like this. You know, you can do that and then have your default catch all in case something doesn't match. I know this might look confusing to you if you look at this for the first time, you're like, what's happening here? But just think of how much you can do and how it can be mixed and matched and used in both your if checks and also your switch expressions. And really, this doesn't stop here. I'm going to pull two examples from uh, Microsoft's documentation just to explain how they come together in different areas as well. So here's the first method I want to talk about. So this is an extension method where it checks whether a character is a letter. And for that to happen, you have to pattern match on the character and say the character is more or equal to uh, lowercase a and less or equal to z or capital A and capital Z. And this is how you can use it in other contexts as well. And actually, this doesn't stop here. You can also use that with tuples. So what you can say in this specific example is, let's say you have a tuple, which is um, a group size and a visit date for a group ticket discount that you want to get. So you're creating a tuple in the group size and the day of the week of the visiting date. And then you can say if less or equal to zero, for the group size, then the group size must, must be positive and you're discarding the second parameter of the tuple. If you want to check for Saturday or Sunday to have like a free ticket, then you ignore the group size and everyone can come in using that same pattern matching in the tuple property. Then if a group size is more or equal to five and less than 10 on a Monday, it's 20. And you can see how you can use that, the, the logic and the, the end and the not operator and the or operator and the discarding to bring this together in a very cohesive way. It's a very nice way of showcasing how much power you have now in your hand. The last thing I'm going to show you in this video is how C-Shop 10 takes this a step further. So previously, and I'm not going to move the version to 10 just yet, I can go now in uh, the shape and I can add, let's say, a, a new shape. So like shape in shape sort of property. It doesn't have any logic behind this. I just want to show nesting in the object I'm using pattern matching on. So let's say we have a shape in a shape. It could be a circle in a circle and it's a property in here, a rectangle in a rectangular. So let's go down here to show you this and say, if um, again, random shape is rectangle and I want to check that shape in shape. So I, I say something like shape in shape and then I want to check the area in that shape in the shape. So I say area is 100. Now, obviously this has nested curly braces and I have to go one level deep. And as you're going deep, you have more and more like of these curly braces. 
it would be nice if I could just do something like this, where I can just use the property directly. Well, that's what C Sharp 10 did. So if I go back here and I bump the version all the way to 10 and I go back, now I can do that. Now I can check and have pattern matching inside that object, which I could before, but directly in that line without having to go through nested curly braces. So this is how it was enhanced in C Sharp 10. Well, that is pattern matching for you. I probably have missed some bits and you can always check the documentation. I'm going to link down below to check the evolution of the feature and how you can use the feature in your own code. I highly recommend you take a look. Like I said in my C Sharp video, it is going a bit more functional in some places and pattern matching is definitely one of those features that you don't want to miss out on. It really is very, very powerful. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.